Pamela, thank you so much for your time. We really appreciate this opportunity to speak with you. Here we are six yeah. months into office, mm -hmm. and I know, and you've acknowledged the backlash that you've faced in this time, mm -hmm. criticism over specifically high profile cases, and now we know that a recall effort has been launched. Mm -hmm. There are people who say that we are here mm -hmm. because they don't feel safe. Mm -hmm. What is your response to that? We, I was elected because the people in this community didn't feel safe, unfortunately. We know that crime under my predecessor was, you know, pretty much exploding. We've had a lot of gun violence. I understand that people don't feel safe. We've, I've been a victim of crime in Alameda County. So we've learned from other district attorneys and, and other studies around the country, the DA's role has really no impact on crime. To create a safe community. We need to invest in um, alternatives to incarceration. We need to invest in programs for young people. People need jobs, you know. We need to do a lot better as a community, particularly in the community where I live, which is Oakland, um, in supporting our, our folks here. Mental health is a huge issue in Alameda County that has pretty much not been addressed um, adequately. So there are a lot of factors that I think would make us all feel safe that are absolutely beyond my control. And so I think the backlash is totally politically motivated. We won the election and the people who want to turn, overturn the election starting from the day we got here, that's an agenda. It's a political agenda. And we're not going to let that deter us from doing the work that the voters uh, elected me to do. You mentioned you live in Oakland. I do you do. feel safe living in Oakland? Yes, I do. I've lived here for 40 years. I feel safe living in Oakland. It's a city. I live in East Oakland even, and I know a lot of people think, oh, that's terrible. I feel safe in East Oakland, yes ma'am. You talked yeah. about the role of your office, which is to uphold public safety, mm -hmm. to advocate for victims. Mm -hmm. Family members of victims mm -hmm. are saying that the decisions you have made are unfair to them, mm -hmm. that sentences that criminals mm -hmm. have been given are excessively lenient, mm -hmm. and that perpetrators are favored over victims. Mm -hmm. What's your response to that? I feel definitely my heart goes out to the people who have lost loved ones in this community, who have been victims of crime. I think that anyone who is traumatized is, you know, faced with grief, it's hard for people. And so we at the district attorney's office are very, very committed to making sure that we're providing the best services for victims. Um, and so some people are, are not able to actually appreciate the work that we do. And, you know, I think it's terrible for people to be um, made to, to be exploited because we serve thousands, hundreds of thousands of victims every year. And I can tell you that the investment that we've made in improving victim services already, we are getting feedback from our deputies and from people who receive the services that they appreciate that we've expanded the scope of services, the training, the resources, so I walked into a challenging situation. The Victim Witness Advocate Division was terribly understaffed and limited in scope, but I can assure you that they are very, very committed to doing the best job that they can for victims. We know across the country, its studies have shown, almost 80% of victims feel like they didn't get the services that they're entitled to, and we're trying to make sure that we improve that rate in Alameda County. I'm sorry to interrupt. Betty, I don't think you asked about the achievements of the first six months. No. That was my next question, oh, actually. Oh, okay. You were asking. I just want to make sure, because we're on a timeline. That, mm -hmm. right. okay. What are the metrics that you're using to gauge your success in office? I think the metrics are we're beginning to create a baseline for the data that we have. Unfortunately, we got here and the, day, the technology is pretty much outdated and underutilized. And so we're beginning to assess how many people are going through the mental health diversion court. They weren't keeping that um, data when we got here. How many cases are actually being diverted from the criminal justice system? We weren't keeping that.
how many victims are being served? They weren't keeping that data. So we're looking at how do we, we're creating systems so that we can assess how many victims are we serving? How many you know, families are able to receive the number of services that they're entitled to? Um, how many folks are getting support through the criminal justice process? As well as you know, looking at how many cases are actually prosecuted at, across the board and how the cases, does it matter your zip code, you know, the cases in Dublin that we charge and prosecute there need to be charged and prosecuted in the same way as we charge them at the Wiley Manual Courthouse or, our, or the Renee C. Davidson Courthouse. So we are developing the metrics to be able to assess that. You talked about black and brown communities being devastated by the policies in Alameda County mm -hmm. that enhancements in particular disproportionately mm -hmm. affect black and brown people. Mm -hmm. And you are committed to rooting out this mm -hmm. kind of racial injustice in the mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. Some people say this is at the cost of justice. Mm -hmm. in, in your pursuit of achieving equity, it is favoring perpetrators over victims. Oh, I is that correct? That's absolutely not true. Often what studies have shown, and it's true in Alameda County, many times people who are perpetrators or labeled as perpetrators were actually victims. Many people um, are cross, there's no bright line, certainly not in Alameda County between someone who's a perpetrator and someone who's a victim. We know, however, from the data that has been done by outside agencies, in particular the special circumstances that over 70% of the young people, actually all people serving life without the possibility of parole sentences from Alameda County are black. And 82% of those who from Alameda County were given life without the possibility of parole under the age of 21, 82% of those are black. And so there is data on the racial disparities. And that's why I think the legislature has given us the mandate under the Racial Justice Act that all district attorneys are required to implement, to eliminate the racial disparities. So it's not just an Alameda County thing, it's actually a legislative act that is the law in California. But is, yeah. is righting the wrongs coming at the cost of what is just and fair to victims and their families? Of course not. It's not just righting the wrongs. You can't have a fair system. You can't have justice if you have a double standard based on race or religion or someone's immigrant status or any of those things. That's not the hallmark of a criminal justice system that I want to live in and I think most people, I know most people in Alameda County don't want to live in a system that is based on your wealth, your income, your race, that certain people get better justice than others. So it's not a question, we can have safety, we will have safety as well as justice. Those things go together in my view. And that's, that's the mandate that we have, yeah. Is, is this a personal agenda for you as well? I would say I've been a civil rights person, someone who has been living the legacy of Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King since I was 11 years old. So it's very personal to me how people are treated. Dr. King believed in equality and justice for all people, whether it was health care justice, whether it was justice in the criminal justice system, whether it was educational justice, all the things that have improved our democracy came from the legacy of Martin Luther King. So I'm very committed to democracy in this country, to justice, to fairness, um, and justice with compassion, I think, is a, is a perfect embodiment of all that. Yeah. Has there been a directive to pursue yeah. the least yeah. amount of prison time in your office? There's in most cases for most crimes. Uh, no, our special directive, which we can provide to you, says that we're going to look at the most serious crimes and we're going to make sure that we're applying justice fairly. Any time that we can divert someone from the criminal justice system, that is a goal because the criminal justice system has been shown to be racially biased and undermining, it destabilizes communities. Mental illness is not a crime. It should not be a crime. And so if we have an opportunity to provide services and healing for people suffering from mental illness, then we should do that. So we're looking across the board at all the drivers of crime, whether it's reentry, whether it's juvenile justice, all of those things 
go into the way that we are, are approaching justice. And lastly, Thank to you. all the prosecutors who have left this office, seasoned mm -hmm. office, Seasoned, seasoned prosecutors have said that they cannot legally and ethically fulfill their duty to represent the rights of victims, and that's why they've chosen to leave. Seasoned prosecutor to me is not someone with seven or ten years. I've been a lawyer for 40 years. So if someone says they're seasoned to me, they need to show me where they've been practicing law for 40 years at the highest level. I think the, the mistaken is with people who don't really understand how to assess whether someone is seasoned or not. And so we know that many prosecutors with minimal experience in practicing law have been given that uh, moniker. And so I think it's important to recognize that I am one of the most seasoned prosecutors in this office and that the direction that I am leading, which is based on integrity and ethical behavior and compassion and concern for the safety and well-being of this office is what is going to be the standard. Thank you. Thank you so much okay. for your time. Thank we you. appreciate it. Sure.